And so I decided to get my first job, which was in Wormwood Scrubs Prison in London. And I started there as a tutor. And as soon as I walked in the door, I felt I was home, which is a strange thing to say when you say that you've just walked into a prison. I also wanted to, to make sure that when, when the prisoners came in, that they could also engage in community learning as well. That was really important to me, that they actually managed to achieve something and that when they left prison, they could walk into a job. And then I found QT and did a tutoring course with them, which frankly changed my life and has put me back into the world where I am at my happiest. I could be wrong here, but I do struggle to understand how, if you haven't had a disengaged childhood, um, how you would understand how to work with some with it with somebody, a teenager, a young adult, a child, who was in that situation. Hello and welcome to the Qualified Tutor Podcast the podcast that brings you the latest in the world of tutoring, edtech and education and, hopefully, inspires in you the big change that each and every one of us is capable of. Qualified Tutor is an industry-leading tutor training organisation and online tutoring community for hundreds of tutors around the world. This podcast is the voice of this community, where we aim to hear from tutors, teachers, entrepreneurs, coaches, business experts, students and more from the world of tutoring, about what inspires them every day, how they can help tutors like you, and what they've learned about tutoring along the way. The question is, what will you learn today? Hi there. Um, My name is Ludo Miller, uh, the host of this podcast that you're listening to, the Qualified Tutor Podcast. Uh, And today we have a very uh, exciting and interesting guest on who's going to be discussing a little bit about uh, their background, uh, working in education and in prisons, uh, and really how they've come to be where they are today as a tutor for Nudge Education, who are a training partner with with qualified tutors. So that guest is Claire Smith. Claire Smith is with us today. Welcome, Claire. Hi, Ludo. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's a real pleasure to to have you on. And today we're going to be discussing an area that we haven't ever spoken about really on on the qualified tutor podcast which is education in prison and specifically reading programs designed for prisoners and 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 kind of uh, led by prisoners fellow prisoners as well so um if that description sounds uh, a little vague or uncertain that's because i myself i'm learning about this as well and we'll be learning today um so as i said claire um used to be head of education at, at a number of prisons um and in fact received uh a series of, uh, of awards for the work um, that she did and recently has come into contact with qualified tutors through, through Nudge Education uh, and has felt a, a boost in her confidence since working uh, within the QT community and being surrounded by the supportive uh, individuals and tutors that we, that we have here. So um, perhaps an inspiration for others to, to join the podcast, to join the community, sorry, um, or even to, to take up tutoring work. Um, but Claire, I thought we'd just dive into our first question here, which is, what is your why as a tutor? Okay. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me on. It's, it, it's, a, it's a, a, a massive honour to, to be talking with, uh, with QT. Um, the reason why I, well, my why as a tutor is because I feel I have a natural understanding and a passion to build self-confidence in somebody, be it a child, teenager, adult, who is disengaged from education and sometimes disengaged from life. So it is something that I am pulled to do. Yeah. And and, and did you, where do you think you developed that idea that that that, that was your 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 belonging that was okay well the the reason for that um goes back to my childhood um I unfortunately had quite a traumatic um upbringing 
um, which led me to become a disengaged, a, a, a chronic, diseng- chronic, chronically disengaged student. Um, and I ended up uh, leaving school without any qualifications whatsoever. Um, I went straight from school, age 16, to um, finding a job um, as an estate agent. Um, and for the first time, I was given confidence and, and, and somebody was, was, had belief in, in me and my abilities. I, I'd never experienced that before, ever. So from there, um, I did very well in that business um, for three, two or three years. And then I started to feel that I, I, I felt a calling to help other children, adults who, who had a similar background to me. I, I felt I had the answer for them to pull themselves out of it. So that's why um, I decided to go into teaching and then um, eventually going into tutoring. And that journey from teaching into tutoring, can, can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, bit more so about I, I, I went back to school in the evening um, to get my teaching qualification. And that was tough at the time. Um, I was living the high life, earning lots of money as an estate agent. And at the age of 21, driving around London in a BMW. Um, but I had absolutely no... Um, the contentment, I had no job satisfaction whatsoever, none whatsoever. Um, and I just had this, this calling to, to help people out of a rut, um, of, of, of falling through the gaps at school, if you like. Um, so I then uh, just did my teaching qualification in the evening um, and started to re- and really enjoyed it and felt that, you know, this, this was for me. But I didn't want to go into and work in a school. Once I'd qualified, I knew that, that I would have been no help to a classroom of children who had um, great or even average family lives and, and uh, uh, good average upbringing. I would be no help to them at all and I would have nothing to offer them. I wanted to work with people who had had um, pretty horrible starts in life um, And so I decided to get my first job, which was in Wormwood Scrubs Prison in London. And I started there as a tutor. And as soon as I walked in the door, I felt I was home, which is a strange thing to say when you say that you've just walked into a prison. But it's the only way I can explain it. I was home and I knew I could help. And I'm not a do-gooder. I don't think I can save the world, but I, I knew I could make a difference. I knew I could make a difference. And, um, and I did, and I put um, everything into that. And I started up their first learn to read and write from scratch class for adults. And it was a huge success. Um, and as time went on, I was then promoted to head of education at HMP Bronzefield in London, which is um, a maximum security female prison. And I really enjoyed it. Um, and my jo- my job primarily was to start up the education department from scratch because it was a brand new prison, um, and it was when we went in there it was just a shell. So I had to uh, employ um, fourteen teachers. Uh, we had to set up the systems from scratch, and we had to set up the classrooms from scratch. The entire department. And uh, we did. We put a library in there. We put a hairdressers in there. We put a retail shop in there um, because I also wanted to to make sure that when when the prisoners came in, that they could also engage in community learning as well. So I didn't want them just to sit at a desk and and paper push, if you like. That was really important to me that they actually managed to achieve something and that when they left, prison they could walk into a job so we I brought in um qualifications uh BTEC qualifications um to become hairdressers to work in retail 
uh, customer service, to work in the library. So all work-related qualifications, which then enabled them to um, to find a job when they left. And, and we would help them with that as well. So we would do interview techniques and all, all sorts of things. And yes, I was... Um, uh, it, it was I was I was really honoured to have received um, an award from Princess Anne um, for the work that that we all did, and it was fantastic. And in it, it, it really was. Um, it, it made it all worth it. Um, and then, so from there, um, I then moved from the prison service in London up to Northumberland because I I uh, married my now husband who's in the air force. Um, and I had two children, one of which was born with Down syndrome. So I had to stop work um, and uh, for a few years, just just um, really just try to help my young son. Um, and then I found QT and did a tutoring course with them, which frankly has changed my life and has put me back into the world where I am at my happiest. And having worked with Nudge, they kept me so busy that I was exhausted. Um, and I was fortunate to have a summer break, but I can't wait to get back with them again in September. And uh, I was working with them. Um, I was given two or three young people who were chronically disengaged from school. And, um, and I, I, again, I felt I was home. And with one of them, I took them out of school. Um, they were six. She was sixteen, and I said the first thing she needed was a a boost in her self confidence because she had n- no self confidence whatsoever. And I saw a lot of me in her, and uh, and I, I found a job for her in the care home, um, and uh, she absolutely loved it. Uh, she didn't want to do it at first, uh, but we did it together. And she thrived, absolutely thrived. They all thought she was wonderful. Her self-esteem and self-confidence went through the roof. Um, and I believe she's now still there in, in Northumberland going in twice a week. And will now in September do a, um, a course at her school uh, related to working in a care home. So in a, in, that is my why as a tutor. I'm blown away, quite frankly, Claire, about, out of that, by that, essentially that kind of testimony almost that you've given there about the power of, of believing in people and about the power of qualifications and about the power of support and about the power of community. Um, you, the, the point you made there about your understanding of, of, of what community-led learning can do for for people in prison which is just another community whether they chose to be there or not um and i i don't think we can just move on in the conversation without exploring that a little bit a little bit further so what you mentioned there that you brought in qualifications for the these prisoners that that was at wormwood scrubs um, no, that wasn't at Wormwood Scrubs, actually. That was at Bronzefield. That was for the women. Um, at Wormwood Scrubs, um, we couldn't bring in those uh, those qualifications um, because they, they had, there wasn't the space to ha- to, for them to actually happen within the prison. So it was outside of the prison. Um, but that was no good because if you've got a vulnerable prisoner in there um, who is in there for... Um, so let's say sexual offenders or something of that nature they they can't they couldn't have attended the classes outside of the prison so what happens to them and some people would say well who cares what happens to them uh the fact is if you don't care if we don't care um then it will happen again it will happen again and again and again so so we all have to take responsibility for that um and if if we and if, if this say this one person I'll I'll just make up a name say say Dave for example who has gone in there as a sex offender well he'll be in a a vulnerable wing within the prison he won't be allowed out of that he won't be allowed to mix with anybody in the prison he certainly won't be allowed to attend classes outside of the prison so 
what are we doing about his self-esteem? Well, again, you could say, who cares? Well, this Dave will be out of prison at some point. Um, so who, who is going to take responsibility, if not us, as a community? Um, so if, if something has damaged him in the past to drive him to, to commit various crimes, we all have a responsibility to help that person. Um, and, and the only way is through education, which builds self-confidence. Um, and even with my background um, and the experience I've had, having been out of work for a few years, um, bringing up my, my young son, William, uh, his Down syndrome um, was, was a big shock to all of us. And um, there was very, very little help for us as a family or, and for William. So it's something, again, I had to fight for um, over, the, over the first few years. And I lost a lot of my self-confidence. Um, I was coming up against wall after wall after wall. And, and this, is, this is going off on a completely different subject. But, and, I, and I won't talk about this here. But the point is, I lost my confidence. And um, I needed to find it again. As soon as William started school, I needed to find it again. And, uh, and, and I did through, do, through doing a tutoring qualification. And, and as I said, now I'm, I'm back in it and I, and I couldn't be happier. To join the growing number of qualified tutors, enroll now for the Level 3 Qualification for Tutors. This eight-week online facilitated course covers the roles and responsibilities involved in teaching and learning, with a particular focus on inclusion, assessment and feedback. Upon completion, you'll be awarded a Level 3 in Education and Training from Ofqual recognised training provider Highfield Qualifications. You will also gain a Qualified Tutor Quality Mark, the independent quality mark for tutors. Whatever your starting point, a qualification for tutors has to be the next step. Enroll today at qualifiedtutor.org forward slash training. So what were you able to take from your days as a, an educator in a prison who inspires self-confidence in, in your students, in, in, in the prisoners there, to your own journey? Were, were there learnings that you were able to take from from that, do you think it helped you get through the journey that you then had? I totally understood. Um, I mean, obviously, there are offenders in prison who have who have committed the kind of crimes that obviously, um, well, not obviously, but I can't relate to, um, and your average person couldn't relate to. But that that is in a whole different ball game, and that's you're going down psychotherapy and psychiatrists, of which I have nothing to do with whatsoever. So my job as an educator, well, it, it was irrelevant what they had what they had done and what they had committed, what crime they had committed. Utterly, utterly irrelevant. It it wasn't my job, and it was none of my business to know what what it was. I just had to make sure I my job was to increase their self esteem and increase their job prospects when they left prison. So getting them to sit down and do a GCSE in English or a GCSE in maths, uh, to me, was a total waste of time. Um, Because once you've got your GCSE in maths or in English, then what? As an adult, then what? Nothing. You know, you've got a long way to go after that. And even if you do your A-levels, even if they they had, some of them had done their A-levels with me in prison, but then from prison you then have to go to university and for an offender without any um self-confidence that's that's too big a jump it's very rarely possible to do that so the way i I found worked was to get work-based qualifications so they qualify they left the prison qualified as hairdressers they left the prison qualified in customer service within a retail environment um, they left the prison qualified in librarianship. And so they had the, 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 the confidence then to leave prison and go straight into a job, which I say we helped to find. But these, some of these people needed hand-holding. If you don't hold their hands, it won't happen. Then everything you've done is for a waste of time. And I happen to know that a few of them that have left prison 
Um, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not allowed, I don't keep in touch with them, nor am I allowed to, but I know on the grapevine that they are still in their jobs after nine or 10 years and doing very well. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a perhaps a key kind of um, attitude change that, that, you know, needs to happen or that perhaps people don't quite realise, isn't it, is that people, not everyone who ends up spending time in prison is, you know, um, closed off to society forever or is yeah. unable to, to be reintegrated. And, and I was wondering, perhaps this is, you know, th- this could be a bit of an awkward conversation, but I, I think it's one that we should try and, and tackle or at least bridge a little bit is what, what, what do you feel, Claire, knowing prisoners and knowing education as you do, knowing tutoring as you do, what do you feel about the idea of, of ex prisoners kind of going into tutoring do you think that's an idea that would that would land well that that people need to learn a bit more about Um, no I think that's an excellent idea um and uh and in fact I did think about that uh, myself at one stage having done the the course with you the tutoring course um I did think about that, how that could work. Um, and yes, I do think that's a, a, a huge possibility. And I think it would be fantastic. And they would get an enormous amount out of that because I, 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 I could be wrong here, but I do struggle to understand how, if you haven't had a disengaged childhood, if you haven't had a childhood and upbringing, um, which uh, was... Traumatic is probably a strong word, where you weren't supported in any way, had no guidance whatsoever. Um, how you would understand how to work with some with it with somebody, a teenager, a young adult, a child, who was in that situation. Um, my, my own children, I don't think, could understand how to deal with a child that I was working with, age twelve who was totally and utterly disengaged with life and with school because he had never, ever known a home. Um, I understood him. I could relate to him. I understood exactly what he was going through because I had lived that life. But but my, I, don't, I don't believe my children would, could ever understand that. Um, so it's a certain kind of person that works that that would would put la heart and soul into it. If I had have stayed in in a state agency, I think I could have been a multimillionaire by now. Um, but you'd be starring on a different podcast. I'd be on a different, different podcast, and I would have no job satisfaction whatsoever, <laughs> none whatsoever. And in that same vein, the the prisoners on your reading program who teach who know how to read and write, yeah. who read and write and help to write other prisoners, it's exactly the same, isn't it? They can understand the same processes that they're going through the same pressures, the same. Hopefully, yeah. Um, I, I think that says a lot about the importance of correctly matching up educator and learner. Um, it's exactly and right. That's exactly right, and. Uh, and there needs to be an understanding because the, being the age I am now, I have the key to the answers for a disengaged 12-year-old. Um, yeah, the, a prisoner um, has the key to the answers for a disengaged 12 or 13-year-old. It's, uh, they, they would know, and, and it, it would be a fantastic collaboration uh, to, to, to get people who have shown interest, done well in the education department, um, within the prison, when they come out to be trained, to be mentors, it would be fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And it would be life-changing for both because your your 12-year-old, let's just call him Bill for the sake of it, Bill, um, who I was working with um, a couple of months ago through Nudge, uh, Bill didn't want to go to prison, didn't want anything to do with prison. But I can tell you now, you know, he, he's on his way. So. Sorry, you mean to going into prison or going yes, through a prison? Yes. Yes. If he carries on the way he carries on, he's on his way to prison. Right. 
And I told him that. And, uh, and he doesn't want to go to prison. So fortunately, Nudge have got the right people to work with him. And so I pray to God that, you know, he, he gets turned around. Hmm. So just to clarify, does do Nudge do work in prisons? Or is that something? No, they don't. They no, don't. Okay. they don't. And no, that, they don't. that's not something that you feel that you would be returning to at this point? Um, possibly, possibly. It depends. I mean, I'm waiting at the moment now for my children to start school here, which will be um, uh, around the 3rd or 4th of September. And then I will be phoning Nudge and saying, I'm free. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. And so I've got a lot of contacts still in the prison service here, here um, within various educational establishments. Uh, so I, I'm sure I will, they'll find something for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm hampered a little bit on time because of uh, school hours and things. So I just have to try and fit it in. Yeah. So just finishing, Claire, with, with the five-year plan because um, that's a great way to finish. What, what would success look like for you in, in five years from now? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would like to be um, recruiting. Um, I would like to see myself recruiting the right people, whether it be at the prison service, whether it be people um, leaving young offenders institutions, um, and guide them into tutoring and guiding them into mentoring. Because again, um, I, I, I think I feel I know the right the right people that would that would they get a huge amount of it out of, out of it, and also um, they would be able to stop uh, young offenders head, going back into prison or heading into adult prisons. It, I, I feel and have felt for years, for a long, long time, this is not rocket science. It can be stopped, but um, it has to have the right, the right backing, the right people to do it, um, and, and taking prisoners, once they've left prison, taking their rehabilitation seriously and not just throwing the word rehabilitation around and actually not doing anything with them. But training them to help the young offenders. That's what I'd like to be doing. Well, let's hope that that, that, that happens. You certainly created the foundations for that to become a reality. So um, <laughs> what, what, a, what a great kind of uh, plan to work towards. I don't know if you just came up with that on the spot, Claire, or whether you've been considering that for a while now. But um, if you are listening to this uh, and, and you think that the kind of work that Claire has done in the past and current and, and, and does now and will be doing in the future, then you can contact Claire on LinkedIn or within the Qualified Tutor community. Um, as Claire mentioned, she's recently taken uh, our, our QT training course. Uh, we have two tracks for that. You can find out more at qualifiedtutor.org slash training. Um, and you can find out more about Nudge Education who work with chronically disengaged pupils, they are a tutoring organisation. Um, you can find that more at nudgeeducation.co.uk. Both of those links will be in the show notes below. But I hope you've enjoyed that conversation, everyone. I, I truly found that an inspirational um, message that, that Claire gave us. That's the first time I've heard this kind of narrative, the, 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 this explanation of the link between education and, and prisons. Um, it seems like such an obvious thing, but but no one's really talking about it, or at least not not in the circles that, that I find myself in. So thank you so much, Claire. Very um, welcome. I've, I've enjoyed it. I hope that was enjoyable for you as well. Yeah, too. yeah. Um, And that's just a very, very informative conversation so re-listen to that if you're listening there'll be things that you didn't pick up the first time i'm sure you can find claire in the qualified tutor community and we will see you all again for the episode next time thanks claire again thank you thank you bye cheerio bye thanks for listening to the qualified tutor podcast where tutors share their expertise to support the tutoring community if you'd like to continue the conversation join our qualified tutor community 
at www.qualifiedtutorcommunity.org or find it in the show notes below. We exist to connect, share and learn with you because tutoring is a small job that makes a big difference.